What up, gang? Carolina Drop Pot coming at you on Sunday evening. It's about 6.15 p.m. I had to go load the tater wagon up today uh, for work tomorrow. So this is kind of a late video. And I'm going to tell you, I've already done two videos on the same subject today. Did one uh, that was about 17 minutes long. I decided I didn't like it. I deleted it. I'd done another one. I stopped at about the four minute mark. I deleted it. Didn't like that one. I, I, I kind of got to rambling as I tend to do sometimes. I'm going to try to keep this one short and sweet. I don't have a lot to say about that ball game last night. It was just an utterly embarrassing performance on both sides of the ball. Defensively, for a while, I thought South Carolina had played decent until you start to look at, at stat lines and you start to you, when, when a game is like that and it's it's a game that outside the first quarter is it's just a giant wet turd of a ball game you kind of don't really see what's going on stat wise they got abused on the ground again last night you, you couldn't stop the run again last night and, I, and me and my naive mind, and I'm looking at it, and just from the eye test of, of this, it looks like you're stopping the run somewhat because Clemson's not running for big chunks. They're not run, pulling up 15, 20-yard explosive runs. But they rushed the ball for five yards of carry last night. A little bit over 200 yards, five yards of carry. That's first down, second down, boom. You got a first down. Just on an average, that's first down, second down, boom. You've got a first down. Matriculating the ball down the field. That didn't always turn out like that on every play. Obviously, that's just an average. But you can't give up 200 yards on the ground and expect to win a football game when your offense is abysmal as what South Carolina's was last night. I know Clemson has a really good defense. You didn't protect Spencer Rattler at all. Quite frankly, I'm surprised the guy didn't get killed last night or, or get, get seriously injured. Thank God he didn't. Uh, you know, I, I feel bad for like Jordan Travis, who actually plays on a team that actually has uh, a valid offensive line uh, to protect him, and then he goes out there and, and gets a, sustains a broken leg. Somehow or another, Spencer Rattler was lucky enough to avoid the same kind of fate this year with probably the worst offensive line that I've seen ever. And I place all of this on the shoulders of Shane Beamer. You're the dude, man. You're the dude. You're the one who wanted the job. You're the one who said you loved it here. You're the one who said this place means the world to me. I love these kids. Blah, blah, blah. You just fed us all of this stuff. And I quite frankly think it's a load of bullshit myself. I think it's a load of crap. And I don't care if there are Gamecock fans out there that agree with me. That's great. Go agree with me. Hit the thumbs up on the video, and we'll rock on. If you don't agree with me, tough. Tough. I've got an opinion just like everybody else does. I'm fucking done with it. I'm sick of this dude. I told you three years ago this was not a good hire. And guess what? Hindsight's 2020 because I'm right. It's not a good hire. And it's not going to be a good hire. And they're stupid if they continue to leave him here and, and continue to just fester in mediocrity. But that's, that's what they're going to do. But I mean, until somebody ponies up the money and buys him out and gets him gone, it's going to be the same old crap. To me, it's either fish or cut bait, and you might as well go on ahead and cut bait now because you're, this is not going to get you where you need to go. They kicked the can down the road with Will Muschamp for however many years, gave him a contract extension when he didn't deserve it, and then they're doing the same thing with Beamer, the same thing. And I've said all of this in videos earlier this year. It, it, this is not the first time that I've seen it. You, they don't make good coaching hires and... Therefore, a few years later, you're pro you're producing a crappy product on the field. It's 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 not a very uh, complex cycle to figure out. I don't know what facets of the job Shane Beamer is good at. We could say recruiting. I, I don't. I mean, we're mired somewhere in you know the the lower middle of the SEC in recruiting right now. 
even though our class ranks pretty favorably nationally, I, he only has like 16 commitments. I don't know if all these guys are staying committed or not. Um, you're going to have to re-recruit re your whole roster and try to get the people that you need to stay and that you want to stay to stay here. I don't know who's going to stay. I don't know who's going to bolt. Somebody's going to bolt. Hopefully you're able to go out there and bring some decent players in for the portal this year because you sorely need them badly. Uh, as far as firing coordinators, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. One would say the defensive coordinator, uh, Clayton White, needs to go, but I think Shane Beamer needs to go before any of them do. So, um, that, that's why I'm just getting short and sweet with this video to the point I'm officially off of, of the, the whatever, the, the Shane train, this crap. Uh, I'm done with it, man. I, I'm done with it. I told you once, months before, um, you know, I'll be a game cop a lot longer than he is, right? I ain't going nowhere. Um, so, uh, his time in Columbia is limited. Uh, it's just up to them to uh, to figure out when they're going to cut strings because he's not, this guy's not a football coach. It's not good. Um, he, you, know, you, you had a play last night where a Miriam Brown was clearly out of bounds when he caught a ball that Spencer Rattler threw. Yeah, it was a gutty play by Rattler. It was a gutty play by Miriam Brown to catch it. But unfortunately, his knee landed in bounds. The rest of him landed out of bounds. Both his feet were out of bounds when he caught it. It was not a catch. Anybody could see it. You have a, a video board that's like 30 feet tall and 100 feet wide that anybody could see it. But you're sitting here over here arguing with the official after this is over with. And then I guess when the, when the call didn't go your way, you're placing your hands on your hips. You're all the way away from, detached from your team, detached from your players, the ones that you love, with this look on your face that's half Ted Bundy, half Bozo the Clown, staring off into space. You don't know what you're doing. The the And then last night you start bawling at the end of the press conference. I just, I don't know where your head's at. I, I don't think you may be fit up here and that's okay because uh, there are a lot of us that need a little brain straightening out every now and again. But I, I don't think that you are emotionally equipped to be a head football coach, at least not at this level. So I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say, fire Clayton White, fire Dowell Loggins. Fire. No, if they don't have a leader that's worth a the shit, they're not going to be worth a shit. So uh, congratulations to Clemson. Uh, defense played lights out. Um, they'll go to a bowl game. I saw it projected somewhere. They may play Oregon State in the bowl. That's going to be interesting if they do. Because Oregon State will be... Uh, I guess they'll be led with an interim head coach or uh, whatever, uh, coordinator. Somebody's going to be heading them up because uh, Jonathan Smith is off to Michigan State. Unless he coaches them. I don't know. I mean, you've seen that happen before. Some of these games, the head coach has actually coached the team in their bowl game, and I don't really think anybody much does that anymore with you having to go. He's got a real mess on his hands to go straighten out now anyway. So, and, and Look, there were people actually, like I saw on Twitter, they were uh, – saying that I can't believe Michigan State hired this guy. What? I mean, <laughs> Oregon State has been in the shitter for years. I mean, he's led them, he led them to a 10-win season last year, and they won eight games this year. Um, you know, they've been ranked right almost in the top 10 uh, at several points during the year. Yeah, I mean, they got blown out by Oregon. I mean, did you look at their, their most recent score, and that's how you determine that Jonathan Smith's not going to be – a uh, good head coach at Michigan State. He'll do some really good things at Michigan State. People that are saying that are just just ignorant, just absolutely ignorant. And to, also to clarify, also to the uh, video, the Mark Stoops video today. So now it looks like I got a lot of stuff from the comment section, which is great. I like getting things from the comment section because I did that video really early in the day, and more and more comes out um, about things uh, the, the the later and later we get in the day. And so it looks like the, the Texas A&M threw a fit uh, about Mark Stoops uh, being the head coach. Maybe that's not who they wanted. Maybe the boosters and the, the Texas A&M folks, <laughs> that's not who they wanted. Uh, so they threw a fit, and Mark Stoops was kind of told, hey, 
it's going to have to remain in Lexington, Kentucky. We're not going to be able to hire you. So that that's what the Twitter people say. I don't know that that's official or not. Uh, that to me, I I don't I don't really get that. To me, I mean, they, you know, they, uh, people in the comment section, I'm, I'm seeing dumb comments that are like. Well, I mean, you know, he's winning seven games a year at Kentucky, and then Texas A&M wants to hire him to win seven games a year. I mean, do you not? I mean, do you not realize the difference between Texas A&M and Kentucky? If you're able to win seven, eight games a year at Kentucky uh, with the level of three-star players, which is mostly what Kentucky's roster is, it just is. I'm not throwing shade at Kentucky. That's what they've got. He's done a really good job of building Kentucky with those kinds of players. What's he going to be able to do with the kind of players he's going to be able to get at Texas A&M and the resources that he would have at Texas A&M? <clears throat> He'd be winning 10, 11 games within a couple of years. I mean, that team would be – that would be a playoff team. With a, with a with the playoff expanded to 12 teams, he'd be in the playoffs year in, year out. I have no doubt. Stoops knows what he's doing. He's a good program builder. I give him a little bit of shut. I call him the human baked potato. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, when he's playing South Carolina, I don't like him because he coaches Kentucky, and that's one of our rivals. But uh, from the outside looking in, I, I mean, I have no beef with the guy outside of uh, that one week a year, and I think he's done a pretty damn good job. So Texas A&M, I mean, it reminds me of the Tennessee situation from a few years ago. If you'll remember, uh, the, the Tennessee fans threw a big fit when – they were going to hire Greg Schiano to be the head coach to replace Butch Jones. They didn't want Greg Schiano because he was at Penn State when the Jerry Sandusky stuff was going on, and just I mean, all kind of just just hillbilly nonsense. They they threw a fit, uh, almost burnt down the city of Knoxville uh, because they were going to hire Greg Schiano for the coach, and then. The, the Vols were forced to uh, renege the offer to Shiano, and then they hired Jeremy Pruitt. Well, how'd that work out for you? And then, the, but the Vols, are, they're, they're like, oh, it worked out great anyway. We ended up getting Josh Heupel out of it, okay? Well, Josh Heupel won eight games this year at Tennessee. I think Greg Shiano won six games this year at Rutgers. I mean, could Greg Shiano have won eight games with Tennessee talent versus Rutgers talent? This, he, he probably could have. So uh, that's about all I got to say about it, guys. Shane Beamer is not the the man for South Carolina. Um, I'm not going to make a bunch of videos, uh, you know, dissing on these coordinators and, and dunking on these players because they're they don't have they don't have the right leader. And that's all, uh, that's all it boils down to. Those are my true feelings on it. Season's over with, but it doesn't mean the Carolina Jackpot channel is going to shut down. We'll still continue to keep pumping out the college football content here. And I'm going to start doing some more videos on a more national level. I'm not saying I'm going nationwide. No doubt I could if I wanted to, but I'm just kidding. I, like I did today on the Mark Stoops thing, or start doing some more, some more relative topics, uh, outside of just South Carolina stuff because, uh, quite frankly, it's not always that interesting. Um, some of the other stuff can be a little bit more dicey and uh, a little bit more, a little bit more, a uh, little bit more meat to dive into. So anyway, I'll see you guys later on. I appreciate it. Peace. And I'm out of here. Still go Gamecocks. Ah, ah, ah. Woo. I'll see y'all later.